Welcome to Wonderland. It's Ari here with another Top 5 Wednesday. And before any of you ask me, where is she and what is she wearing? I am not in front of my bookshelf because my room currently is atrocious and I need to clean it. But I want to get this video made first before I start cleaning it. Second, what is she wearing? <laughs> I'm in my comfy clothes. Flannel shirt is my comfy clothes. We finally got the air conditioning somewhat fixed. And the hat is because not only do I like Batman, but also because my hair is atrocious too. And I pulled it back in the ponytail. So let's just jump right into this top five Wednesday. This one is my favorite, so far, favorite retellings in YA. And this, ex this list was pretty hard to pick from because there are some that I love that I don't have on my possession. And then there are some of these on the list. I'm like, there's more that should be on this list, but either I don't have them in my possession or because I haven't finished reading them, but they deserve to be on this list. Or there's so many out there that it's hard to choose just top five. So here's the ones that I actually have in my possession. Coming in at number five, yes, it's over here in this little stack, is Tiger Lily by Jodie Lynn Anderson. And the reason why it's number five is because I haven't even finished the book yet. But I will. Trust me, I will. But so from what I read so far, it is really, really good. I've always loved Peter Pan. And the fact that this is told by Tinkerbell, Tinkerbell from Tiger Lily's point of view, it's so interesting. But yeah, I definitely am going to finish it. Do not worry. But this is so beautiful. And I've seen so many retellings of Peter Pan, even the way Once Upon a Time did Peter Pan, which still breaks my heart. Like he... <laughs> Uh, like they made him so evil but he's still so cute like I just can't I can't deal coming in at number four is Beastly by Alex Flynn and that is because this is one of the most beautiful retellings of Beauty and the Beast that I have ever ever seen not only was it made into a movie with two of the most sexiest people I know or fanned over Vanessa Hudgens and Alex Pettifer Alex is Bay, like oh my gosh to me at least to me not everyone feels the same but to me he's bay and like this in this modernized and it's so beautiful and it's like set in new york and like if this stuff could actually happen in real life it would and like they use some of the lingo and slang from that point in time which is like in 2010s but only a few years ago or so so yeah it's really really good coming in at number three is actually a retelling of a classic and that is the madman's daughter by megan shepherd and it's actually a retelling of the island of dr moreau one of the most classic pieces of literature besides dr jekyll and mr hyde and watson and holmes but it is so good and the fact that's told from like the author gave him a daughter it's told from her point of view and just everything about this is so amazing. And the ending is not what I expected. Like every YA ending, when there's a love interest, I'm like, oh, they're gonna end up together and blah, 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 blah. Happily ever after. There's no happily ever after. That's why there's two other books after this. But it's so crazy and gothic and somewhat mysterious that it just grabs you. Even the first page just grabs you. Like, I'm like, you're going to want to read this. I don't care if you think the chapters are intimidating. You're going to want to read this. Coming in at number two, one of my most favorite retellings of all time, and that's because it's so freaking badass, and that is Dorothy Must Die by Danielle Page. Like, look at this. Look at this. And when you strip it, I love stripping hardcover books to see what's underneath. That is beautiful. That is beautiful as shit. And it, like, it's so cool. Yes, I curse. I just came back from school and at school curse a lot. So, yeah, but it's beautiful. And in this, Dorothy is an evil dictator who takes over Oz, drains all of his magic, and some random girl from Kansas named Amy Gum has come to stop her, joining the Revolutionary Order of the Wicked, which is a band of wicked witches trying to take down Dorothy. And I recommend this to pretty much everyone. Me and one of my best friends, we are into the series. I got her into the series, but she is now ahead of me because she bought 
yellow brick war before me. And the only reason that happened, not only because it was her birthday, but <laughs> I'm broke. The fact that yellow brick war came out around my birthday, but she got it on her birthday a month later because I was broke and the birthday money I received, I had to use on things I needed. <laughs> the life of almost becoming a college student. Coming in at number one, and everyone loves this book. Every single book nerd I have talked to reads this series, and this book is so sexy, and it gives you, like, these amazing feels, like, just, uh, but it is A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J. Moss. This, this is so sexy. Like, this cover is sexy. This cover is Instagram-worthy. Even the back is Instagram-worthy. When you strip it, it's instant. Not only does this feel sexy, that is black and red, even that, like, look at the side of that. That is sexy. Like, so fucking sexy. The whole book is sexy. Like, oh, but it is inspired by Beauty and the Bees. I wouldn't call it exactly a retelling because sometimes it does derail it a little bit, but it's inspired by Beauty and the Bees. You could consider it a retelling of Beauty and the Bees, but it's one of the most sexiest books I have ever read. I even have A Court of Mist and Fury on my Kindle, but here's the thing. Since I have a long list of TBR and books I gotta read for authors and everything, <laughs> and books that I gotta finish, yeah, I'm probably not gonna get to that book until like June or July or maybe even August, my first week in college or something. But trust me, I will read it because Sarah is amazing. I love Throne of Glass. I'm still waiting for my Akatar tote bags. So it's supposed to be in the mail sometime soon, but we'll see. Like, we'll see. Like, I got the book. I submitted my receipt before May 3rd. <laughs> I'm good. I'm just waiting for that bag because, oh, man, that promotion was such a genius idea. I love this so much. It's so sexy. Oh! But that is my top five Wednesday. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure to hit subscribe and like down below. And I will link my blog where I reviewed Challenge Accepted by Irene Hadley. Still can't pronounce her name. I read her book. It was on my TBR for May. I've already read it. I've already reviewed it. But I did it on my blog, not here on YouTube. So I will link the post down below along with my Instagram, my Goodreads, my Twitter, you know, comment, like, subscribe. Y'all know what to do. <laughs> yeah, I'm being weird. I'm so freaking tired. But uh, yeah, just thanks for watching and, you know, keep calm and keep reading. I'm trying to find a sign off <laughs> and I suck at it, but thank you. Goodbye.